Hello and welcome back to Mark's Garden UK. And if you've been watching my channel or following my channel, you know that I like my olive trees. And I've rescued several olive trees from the brink of death. Olive trees that I've bought at supermarkets or garden centres when they've been at the end of their life and they were about to be thrown away. And so if you've got an olive tree and you're worried about it, this might be the video for you. This has to be the most sorry example of an olive tree that I've ever rescued. I've just bought this from Aldi. You won't believe how much I've paid for it. Well, you perhaps might, because you might think it's already dead and it's not worth a penny, but I don't believe that tree is dead and I believe I can rescue it. But before we get into rescuing it, let's have a look at it. It's light as a feather. It's completely dried out. It's not been watered. This poor tree, all its friends have been bought and they're probably in lovely terracotta pots somewhere around the area. But this one's been left on the shelf all on its own. And it's not even been watered, it's so dry. And all the leaves are crinkly and dried up. Many of them have fallen off or on the, the top of the soil in the pot there. But I won't be giving up on this. And I'm going to give this olive tree a millionaire's olive tree lifestyle from now on. It's going to be rescued. There's even bits of it snapped off and broken off. The first thing we're going to do is going to soak this in water for 24 hours. So I'll do the next bit of this video tomorrow. You'll see it immediately. Uh, but I'm going to soak it in this big tub of water. And any of these leaves that come back to life and regenerate themselves in that water, I'll leave on. But the rest of them, I'll prune off. Well, that is for tomorrow's video. So for now, I'll leave it there and I'll come back and do the majority of the rescuing of this uh, olive tree tragedy tomorrow. Let's get it plunged in this water. So here we are. That's had a really good soak and you can tell it's had a good soak because it's a lot heavier. I've assembled my olive tree rescue kit here and I'll talk you through that in a moment. But for now, the first thing I'm going to do is have another look at this plant. I was hoping that at least some of these leaves might have recovered and turned green. But that sadly is not the case. Um, but don't worry. What you're about to see, by the way, I've done three times before, so I'm reasonably confident it's going to work. And I'll tell you now that I spent the grand total of £2.50 on this tree. I bought it from Aldi. Um, it was the last one on the shelf, and I asked them how much they wanted for it. <laughs> and they knocked quite a bit off the price, so I got that for £2.50. First thing I'm going to do is have a look. All the leaves are dead. All the olives are black and hard. You can hear them falling on this board like little stones completely dried out completely dehydrated that doesn't worry me because if you think about how nature evolves things a plant needs a survival mechanism and if it's under threat it will have evolved to do something about that threat and one of the threats this plant has had it's dried out it's not had enough food and nutrients and water and so the evolutionary approach of that is to drop leaves because <laughs> leaves are where the moisture expires from or transpires from i should say so it doesn't surprise me that this is kind of shut down in shock and cut off all its leaves and its leaves are actually dropping off and that i think is a natural survival response it doesn't worry me one thing i can do to check if there is any life in any of these twigs below the leaves is just snip through one and see if there's anything that resembles a healthy twig there and i don't know if you can see that but right there is green and white and right there there is also moisture so that means it's taken up some of that moisture that i've just given it so it's still alive it's it's still a working system it's still drawing water up it just doesn't look good up here now what does it look down here i'm going to take it out of its pot and take all the soil off the roots and have a look at the roots and we'll be using these secateurs for two reasons i'll be pruning the top i'll also be pruning the roots so let's bring the camera in a bit closer and have a look 
at these roots. Well, happily they are quite moist and wet. It's quite a dense root ball. Let's peel this off now and have a look what we've got. Yeah. I'm just gonna take this soil away. And don't worry about any damage to these roots because it will stimulate new growth this. So don't be concerned about the fact that we're actually damaging some of these roots. I would say that's very densely packed. It's almost like it's been shoved in to the pots and compacted down. I'm actually going to get the hose pipe on this now and give it a bit of a wash. Whilst that's draining off a little bit, I'll tell you now why I've just done that with water. I think water is a slightly less destructive way of getting the soil off the roots. And I do want to get the soil off the roots because I want to have a proper look at the roots. Um, and I've got quite a healthy root ball there. I'm quite pleased with that actually. And if I again just snip through a few of these roots, I can see that there's still life in there. It's pretty obvious when there's life in a, in a root. Um, you'll see it for yourself if you try this, but the signs of life are pretty self-evident. And I'm just snipping away a few of these roots to kind of stimulate root growth. And you'll see in a moment what I'm going to do as a counterbalance. That plant is used to having all those roots. If I take away its roots, there's no way that plant can survive. And so in a moment, I'm going to give this a radical prune. But that's a reasonably healthy root stock, and I'm quite happy with it. So now let me talk you through the basic elements of my olive tree rescue kit. I've got some grit here. I'm going to mix that grit into some general purpose compost. I've got a terracotta pot with a hole in the bottom. I think olives really suit terracotta. And I've got some crocs to put over the bottom. And if there's one thing I've learnt about olives is they like to be well drained. So we'll be doing something to improve the drainage. And that is adding grit to the compost. And finally, this pea gravel here. This is to top dress it, and I'll talk about the benefits of top dressing that pot when I get to that in a moment. So now we turn our attention to potting up the olive. And I always think olives and other Mediterranean type plants really suit a terracotta pot, but there are other benefits to that. It's breathable, so it will let some of the moisture out. If there's one thing I've learned about olive trees is they really do like well-drained soil. Uh, so. I've got the crocs to put in the bottom. I've got my terracotta pot. Now, I'm going to do something to the compost which will help with the structure and allow it to drain better. And that is add up to a third grit. And that will really help keep it broken down and help with the structure. How do I know how much soil I need to mix together to fill that pot? It's really straightforward. I'll just use the pot as a guide and I'll kind of fill it just to about two inches below the top and I'll tell you why I'm leaving two inches at the top in a moment. So once that's full I'll empty it out onto this board and give it a good mix together and that will then provide the basis for potting the olive tree up again. So in goes our lovely new rich compost with plenty of food in it and it does say on the back that this will give us enough food for up to four months. Well this olive is going to need food because it's going to be producing lots of lovely new leaves and lots of lovely new roots. Now, when it gets to the stage when it's used all the food in this compost, I've got several options. I can either repot it or feed it from the top. Let's get some grit in. That'll do. Any grit that I add to this compost will help with the drainage. Now, let's tip it all out and give it a good mix. And 
and you can see as I work it that grit going into that compost and I'm also at the same time breaking any lumps up. Now the important thing to remember about plants and plant roots is they do need oxygen to them. So what concerned me about this when it was in its pot, it was very densely planted. How does oxygen get to those roots? Well, with this much more open structure, there's a much better chance of oxygen getting into that roots. I'm even going to put more grit in. I might as well use the rest of that bag. You could use perlite for this. Perlite aids with drainage. And if you want to know what perlite and vermiculite are, there's a video on my channel where I explain the differences. And I'll put a link at the end of this one. I think that's nicely mixed now. So we can start now to use that to pot up the olive. Now this bit couldn't be easier, but there are a couple of points to note. And the first being, how deep do I plant it? Well, firstly I'll put the crocs in the bottom. I need that to be planted no deeper than it was in its original pot, because I don't want to plant up the stem because that might cause rot into the stem. But at the same time, I want to leave a good couple of inches at the top Number one, because there's got to go gravel on the top. But number two, I give these a good soaking. In between watering them, I let them dry out almost, and then I give them a really good soaking. And leaving a bit of a space at the top of the pot allows you to flood it. Whereas if you overfill a pot and have a mound, the water just runs off. That's a tip for most planting in pots, I think. So I'm going to put enough underneath this to bring it up to about there. So let's get to it with this lovely... Um, lovely compost that we've just mixed with horticultural grit. So I'll just put some in the bottom like that and then we'll do a bit of a test. It needs more. Some more can go in. And that is about right. So that plus gravel will be just below the surface of the pot. Next thing, fill it up. I'm just putting some around the bottom of the root ball to stabilise it. And then what I'll do is I'll make sure it's vertical. And a good tip for making sure something is vertical is step away from it, because if you're right up close to it, you can't always get whether it's vertical or not. So I'm just going to step to the side and just check and make sure it's vertical and central. And then we'll get the rest of this in. Think about how water drains through a pot. It goes down through gravity and it goes past the roots. And that's why top dressing occasionally will help feed the plant because all the nutrients in the top will leach down. Now, I'd like a little bit more compost in there just to fill it up. We've got the well-drained stuff around it and beneath it, but I'm just gonna put a little bit more compost on top. There's a bit of a top dress. I'll just do one more look to make sure it's vertical. Step away from it. And that will do me. I'm not over firming it. If you over firm it again, you're putting the compost is too compacted beneath and it needs air and it needs room to grow. So you do want some contact with the soil. And what we'll do to it encourage contact with the soil in a moment and we'll give it a good soak in and that will wash all that soil in and around the roots. The final part of the potting up process is adding the gravel on top. Lots of benefits to this and I'm going to get some more because I've not quite got enough there. I've got a big bag full around the back of the garage. Benefit one, it's very aesthetic I think. Benefit two, it helps retain moisture, which saves us water in the garden. Number two, it suppresses weeds. And uh, the fourth benefit really is it will act as a ballast because this will take some time to put some roots into that soil. So it won't be very stable at first. So I'll just go and get a bit more gravel and then we'll come back and attend to this at the top. So 
So there we are, that's planted up in a moment. I'll give that a really, really good soaking and I'll flood it with water and that water will help the roots make contact with the soil and it will start the ball rolling on the recovery of this olive tree. Now, let's have a look at the top. What you're about to see might look brutal, but I've done this three times before and I'll show you the results of what happened last time. I did this, I got great results. I'm going to take two thirds of these branches away and I'm just going to prune them off with a secateurs and every time I prune one I'm looking to see if there's life in it and if I can't see any life I go a little bit further down but at the moment every one I'm pruning off here has got life in it and I have done this once before on a small olive tree like this and there's a video called olive tree extreme pruning experiment where I took everything except one leaf off an olive tree and I set the objective of seeing if I could kill it by pruning it too much and I'll show you some images of that in a moment but that now is a nicely pruned uh, shape in fact I'm going to take a little bit more off the top because it's looking a bit tall what do you think of that does that worry you <laughs> doesn't worry me in the slightest. In fact, the prospects for this plant now are very, very good. So there we go, an olive plant, uh, which cost me £2.50. It came in as an emergency and uh, it's gone into A&E and critical care and we've rescued it. Uh, we're giving it well-drained soil uh, with a, a top dress and we've given it a good prune. And I will now also give it a really, really good soaking. And then before I water it again, I will allow it to almost dry out. That plant with very few leaves does not need lots of water. And the worst thing I could do is keep those roots soggy because number one, it might make them rot. And number two, it would stop oxygen getting to them. So I'm just going to water it once very, very well. And then I'm going to almost let it dry out before I water it again. And that will be the pattern for the life of this olive tree. Now, in about a month to six weeks time, in the growing season, we should expect to see tiny little green buds appearing on this plant. And I think we're just into September, so I think we've got just enough time now for that to start happening and that will set some new buds and we might even see some new leaves on it before the end of the year. You wouldn't do this in winter because the plant would be kind of dormant in winter. But right now, just at the end of summer, we've got enough time for this to work. That little branch there is just sticking up a little bit too much for my life. Hope you've enjoyed that. If you've got any questions, put them in the box below. And I'll run some footage of the other three olive trees, um, which I've rescued in the same fashion, just to reassure you. Uh, and that, in, that will include the one um, which I took every single leaf off. And you'll see what that looks like now. Um, but olive trees are quite robust plants, you know, um, we get a little bit um, nervous about um, looking after them. But if you think about this, some of these plants in their native environment can live up to four or five hundred years old. I mean, a bit more than that. Um, they can't have evolved to survive that long if they were very, very tender, delicate plants. So have confidence, take control of your olive and you'll end up with good results. Hope you've enjoyed that. See you soon. Bye for now.